you got your Bibles with, I invite you to open up to Deuteronomy chapter 31, starting at verse 1, Deuteronomy. Um, fifth book of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, beginning of the Bible, Old Testament, towards the back of that book. 31, chapter 31, starting at verse 1. <clears throat> Mine is titled, The Change in Leadership, Moses' Last Days. Uh, Deuteronomy, fifth book of the Bible, chapter 31. Then Moses went out and spoke these words to all Israel. I am now 120 years old, and I'm no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you. He will take possession of their land, and you will take possession of their land. Joshua also will cross over ahead of you, as the Lord said. And the Lord will do to them what he did to Sihon and Og, the, son, the kings of the Amorites, when he, destroy, when, when he destroyed along with their land. The Lord will deliver them to you, and you must do to them all that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, be strong and courageous for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them. And you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be, dis do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. The word of our Lord. Let's pray. Father, we'd ask for your, your outpouring of your Holy Spirit this morning, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Pour out your Spirit. It's, it's in the working of the Holy Spirit that we're united and tied to one another. It's in the working of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that your word comes alive, Father. It's in your working of the Spirit that, that as your word comes alive and as we gather in fellowship to encourage each other, we receive faith and hope through Jesus Christ. And so, Father, pour out your spirit this morning. Minister to our hearts and our minds. Meet us where we're at and fill us. We ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, well, it's 2018, and it's our hope that this year would bring you into deeper relationships with God, with fellow believers, and with non-believers. The church in Christ, we are built up we are built up by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that building up happens through relationships. First, our relationship to, the God, to God. We are fed and fueled and powered and strengthened. We are corrected and encouraged. That's where it all begins, with our relationship to our Lord. And it's from that primary relationship to our Father in heaven that our life flows, that our relationships are fed and ordered and understood. So through Christ and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we who are the church are connected to one another. We encourage each other. We hold each other accountable. And we lift each other up. And along with our fellow believers, it's by God's calling and connecting that we are placed in relationship with non-believers to be hope, to be grace, to be forgiveness, and to be love, to bring Christ into the lives of those around us. So it's our prayer in 2018 that it can be a time of renewal for our relationships. With that in mind, we've decided to spend a little bit of time at the beginning of 2018 talking about New Year's resolutions. But not our resolutions, which usually end up faltering or failing, amen? But rather God's resolutions to us. God has made promises to us that literally transform us and our relationship both to him and to others. God's resolve towards us is powerful. When we ground ourselves in these resolutions, these promises that God has made towards us, we can step out in hope. We can live in peace and we can minister in power. Last week, we heard the resolve that God made towards you and towards me to make you new, to make you new with a new purpose and a new song. This week, God put on my heart to remind you this, this resolve that he has towards you, to never leave you nor forsake you. 
He will never leave you nor forsake you. So what does this resolve that God has made towards us to never leave us or forsake us mean? And in fact, it might even sound a little bit redundant if you hear it. After all, aren't leaving and forsaking kind of the same thing? Well, I actually think they're a little bit different. What God is telling us is this. First of all, I'm not going to step away from you. I'm not going to leave you. As you know, a lot can change in the blink of an eye, right? When you've got a toddler in your house and you go, I'm outside and you're like, I'm going to go in and just check on that phone call. Or I'm going to go outside with the toddler inside and go check the grill for a little bit. It just doesn't happen. Because things can change in the blink of an eye, can't they? Things can change so quickly. God says, I'm not going to step away. I'm not going to gap out. I'm not going to turn my back. And the second thing he says is, I'm not going to forsake you. Now, forsake means to abandon, desert, leave high and dry, cast aside, strand, leave in the lurch, walk out, dump, ditch. God has resolved, I am not going anywhere. I'm not leaving you. And I am committed to you. I'm not going to forsake you. I'm committed. So let's go into scripture together and have God speak into our hearts and our minds through his word regarding this resolution towards us, this promise. And there are three things that we're going to hear from scripture today regarding God's resolve to never leave us or forsake us. And it is this. God's presence makes all the difference because... God's presence is an abiding presence, number one. It's an assisting presence, number two. And number three, it's an anchoring presence. Abiding and assisting and anchoring. In Deuteronomy chapter 3, the people of God were completely unsettled. They were still wandering. Remember, 40 years, they were worried. It was a time of transition, and great changes lay before them. Change all around. Moses says, I'm 120 years old. My leadership is kind of done. <laughs> when you just go like, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a stretch, right? That's a long time of leading. Thank you so much, Moses, right? It's time. It's over. And Joshua would be anointed the leader of God's people, a new leader, And they would finally cross over into the promised land after this 40 years of wandering, after being brought out of Egypt, right? But the land that they were promised, as you heard in Deuteronomy chapter 31, is also occupied by a bunch of people. (laughs) They're not just going to waltz into the promised land and have it all before. They have to step into the promised land and deal with the nations that are there as God has promised to give them the land. But they're occupied. But God has promised to be with them. He has promised to be an abiding presence, an assisting presence, and an anchoring presence. Let's look at that text briefly. Let's look at that text together. Abiding. He says a number of times, I am with you. I am with you. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. I am with you. I am with you. He says it a number of times. God tells them, in fact, in the beginning of 31, he says, look at the past. He calls them to look backwards. And he says, you remember how I dealt with the Amorites, with those kings there? Do you remember that in the past? Look back at that. Do you remember? I was with you then. And I'm going to be with you now. I am with you. I will dwell. I will live. I will abide with you through it all just as I have always done. Number two, assisting. He says, I took care of the Amorites. And it's by my hand that the nations that stand before you will be dealt with as well. I'm going to go before you, and I will present them. I will lay them into your hands for my glory. I will assist you, and I will anchor you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, God says. He says it a couple of times, for I am fulfilling a promise, and God never goes back on a promise. Amen? Amen? Doesn't go back on a promise. So we are grounded. These these Israelites are grounded. They are held. They are anchored by that promise. For God himself has said in Exodus chapter 6, verse 7, before they left Egypt, he said, I'm going to be your God, and you're going to be my people. And I'm going to bring you into the land, the promised land. So this story from Deuteronomy, it's a great example of God's resolve to never leave us nor forsake us. But I want to go a little bit deeper into Scripture and talk specifically about how these three aspects, his abiding, assisting, and anchoring presence, affects us, you and me. For God has resolved to be for us, first of all, an abiding presence. 
presence that will live. Abide means to live or to dwell with us. To literally be with us. Have you ever had um, somebody that just kind of shadowed you and just kind of followed you around continually? You ever had that in your life where there's somebody that just kind of is, is just kind of all, you turn around and that person's there again and you're like, I, okay, it's a little bit smothering, isn't it? That sense of somebody kind of always near you. You couldn't make a move without them being right there. Now, sometimes that happens in friendships and, or sometimes it happens in relationships, kind of codependency and unhealthy. But one of the places that I used to see it quite a bit was when my girls were really, really little, you know? And I'd be trying to just get something done, you know, with some tools and some things on a little tray. And I'd be trying to work and they'd be swarming around me. And I'd usually be like, okay, let's go to the hardware store. Come on, you know, and I'd pack them all up. And the four of us would go over to the hardware store and I'd be, you know, you know herding cats, just trying to get some stuff done. And usually somebody at the store would say something like, I see you got your help with you today. And I usually would respond, yeah, a little too much help. Almost too much help, right? I mean, it just gets to be too much. Having someone who is sort of hanging on you with you all the time isn't great. It isn't great unless their presence makes you better, brings you peace and power, causes you to be more effective, more loving, more forgiving, causes you to live with a purpose. Then that presence makes all the difference. Turn to John chapter 14, and you can bookmark this. We're going to come back into John 14 throughout our time together this morning. John's 14, the entire chapter highlights God's promise to never leave us nor forsake us. And in this chapter, we see that God wants to abide in us, live in us. The whole idea of God living in us, it kind of starts out or set up by verses 10 and 11. John chapter 14, verse 10. Jesus is speaking and he says, Do you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I don't speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing this work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. At least believe on the evidence of the work themselves themselves. I am in the Father. The Father is in me. Jesus says, we're one. The Father and I are one. And he says, if you don't believe that, just look at what's, what, what's happened. Look at the works that are occurring as I step out with this oneness, this unity, this abiding of the Father and the Son together. But the text goes on. And he says that the Father in me and me in the Father is what Jesus and what the Father wants for you and I. It's what he wants for us. Look at verses 16 there of John chapter 14. Verse 16 of John 14. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you, to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him and he lives with you and underline it will be what? He will be in you. He will be in you. And I love this. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. I will not leave you as orphans. The Father and the Son, the Son and the Father, the Spirit given into the people of God that we might be united to the work of God. We are one with the Father and the Son through the power of the Holy Spirit. Which, which then when we hear the promises, like Jesus promises at the end of Matthew, verse 20, chapter 28, verse 20, when he's giving the great commission to go out, at the very end of Matthew, chapter 28, Jesus says something amazing. He says, and remember, I'm with you what? Every once in a while, I'll show up and check in. Right? No. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Even to the end of the age, that makes no sense unless we see John chapter 14 and the truth that the Lord is pouring into us a spirit that dwells in us, that never leaves us nor forsakes us, but is at work always to the end of the age. No matter where you are led or where you find yourself, no matter what you face, no matter what you might feel, God is with you. God's abiding presence. That's a promise. That's a promise. 
So not only are we promised God's abiding presence when God says that he will never leave us nor forsake us, we are promised God's assistance, God's assisting presence. Last week we read Isaiah chapter 43. This week I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 41. And if you don't have this underlined, I'd invite you to underline uh, particularly verse 10. But Isaiah 41, verse 8. But you, Israel, my servant. Uh, chapter 41, verse 8 of Isaiah. Jacob, whom I have chosen, your descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I am with you. But not just an observing, watching. This isn't just God kind of on the sidelines seeing how we're doing. This is an active, an abiding, I will strengthen you and I will help you. Anyone here need a little bit of help in their spiritual life? I do. Our faith journey isn't one that we do alone. You are not on your own. This isn't by your lonesome. You see, it isn't accomplished, this, this trusting in the Lord, this faith journey that, we are, that we're on. It isn't just accomplished by ourselves in our head. This isn't an academic pursuit. The faith journey that we, we're on, it doesn't come to fruition in our emotions that we feel God all the time. It is a work that God promises to do and to accomplish in us as we seek him. I will strengthen you and I will help you. God's assisting presence is a promise. Turn to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, starting at verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13. Well, actually, let's start at verse 1. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Hebrews 13. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Verse 3. Continue to remember those in prison if you, are, if you were together with them in, uh, as if you were together with them in prison. And those who are mistreated as you yourself were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money. Be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we with confidence, so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember their leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is an assisting presence. I will be your helper. That helper, it comes from a root word that means to run, to run. The idea is that when we are in need, the Lord literally runs to our aid. So I imagine that it looks like, um, have you ever seen those, um, um, those videos? I think sometimes they're called like dad wins, you know, or, or something like that where like there's a dad pushing a kid on a swing and the, the kid just does a loop off the swing and the dad catches him like right by the ankle. Or like there, there, there's, all, there's all these videos where like in the last second the parent comes along and kind of like right before, you know, there, there could be something really, really terrible happened. And, and there's this image that I have when we talk about this assisting presence of God, a God who runs to our aid, that's like that. <laughs> that he's there, he's with us, and that when there's something happening, God runs to take hold of us, to give us his help. Turn back to John 14. What we saw in John chapter 14 is that this, this, this abiding presence of God also has a purpose, as a purpose and a power you see, his abiding presence isn't just necessarily to be with, with us or to watch over us. His presence is given to assist us and to aid us. So when you look at John chapter 14, at verse 12, Jesus has talked about the power that's at work between he and the Father and the work that they've done. But then he says in, in verse 12 of John 14, Truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will even do greater things than these. Greater things than, how is that possible? Look at verse 16. 
I'm going to ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is going to be given to you and to me. And this Holy Spirit is going to help, is going to assist us. Now, now we have to be clear here that what is being promised here is not necessarily that Jesus, that the Father, that the Lord will help and assist you to do whatever you want or to accomplish your personal worldly goals necessarily. What God is saying here is this. I will assist you and strengthen you so that you may remain faithful. That you might walk in faith and live by that faith. To live as children of light, it'll say later in Scripture. By stepping out in faith with this abiding presence, my presence, the Lord says, will assist you and enable you to accomplish all sorts of things for the kingdom. For the kingdom. And if you listen... When I read Hebrews chapter 13, we heard a little bit of what that looks like. When faith is put into action, it empowers us to love, to love our fellow believers and show hospitality to strangers, to visit people in prison and comfort those who are suffering, to watch over our marriages and not fall into sexual impurity, to keep ourselves free from the love of money, and to be content. The assisting presence of God helps us remain in faith. And that's a word that I need today. Amen? Faith. This isn't you trying to find God. No, this is done as, as we are walking with God, empowered and filled by the Holy Spirit. God assists us in our growth and our faithfulness to him. When God says that he will never leave us nor forsake us, we are promised God's abiding presence and his assisting presence. And finally, God resolves to be an anchoring presence in our life. Have you ever been in the ocean and just been kind of twirled around and beaten up in the waves? It can be in a boat and it can happen. I, I remember I had a, a little tiny fishing boat, 14 foot fishing boat, and I got way out in this lake and I was fishing all day and I had a, I think it was a, uh, a nine and a half horse Johnson. And all of a sudden the waves came up and I had to get into the wind across the lake you know, and I remember pointing the boat. I was laying, practically laying down and just, and I was going, doosh, gadoosh, gadoosh. And I'm like looking at the shore. I'm like, I'm going nowhere. I am not getting anywhere. Or maybe you've been body surfing. I was body surfing once in Thailand off the, the beautiful beaches in Thailand. And I don't know what the waves were doing, but all of a sudden I got twirled around and I didn't know if I was up or down or sideways. And, and you're twirled around. That's really scary. Really scary. Or have you ever tried to fish without an anchor and hold the spot? If you get on a big school of fish and you're just desperately trying to troll backwards and get to that spot again to do what you want to do and to be able to be effective in fishing? Well, here's the thing in Jesus, we have an anchor. Our anchoring presence keeps us from being crushed against the world's rocky shores and thus falling into despair or fear or faithlessness. And this anchoring presence that is ours through Jesus Christ gives us the ability to hold our ground when the tide or the undercurrent of the world are taking others down around us. In him we are held because we are his. I want to just share with you a few places in Scripture where we hear about that anchoring presence, the promises that God has for us from Hebrews chapter 6, Verse 19, Hebrews chapter 6, he says, We have this hope. This hope is, he's talking about Jesus Christ. We have this hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. Firm and secure. In John chapter 10, it says this at verse 28 I am eternal life, and they shall never and I gave them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand, Jesus says. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. In John chapter 6, verse 37, All those the Father has given me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I will lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up on the last days. 
but raise them up on the last days. I will lose none. We have an anchor. Amen? Amen. We have an anchor. This world can beat you up and you can feel unhinged and you can feel tossed and you can feel disoriented. You can lose your sense of direction or your sense of purpose or your sense of value. That's why we need an anchor. That's why you need an anchor. Have you ever seen an ocean-going vessel that didn't have an anchor? Have you ever seen one? No, because there isn't one. It would be crazy to try to come into port and try to stay where you're supposed to stay without an anchor and the rocky shore so close. We don't know what the winds are going to whip up. And we all need an anchor too. The rocks of doubt and fear, the cliffs of faithfulness are all around us and we need to be anchored and we need to be held. And the crazy game that Satan plays is usually on those people that are struggling the most. And they buy into a lie that the anchor is the problem. God doesn't exist. God isn't good. God doesn't care. It's not true. If you lose your anchors, what do you got? You're adrift. Exactly what Satan wants. And so I invite you this morning to come into the loving arms of your Savior, Jesus Christ. And discover once again that God's presence is an abiding presence. It's an assisting presence. It's an anchoring presence. And because of this truth, because of this, we can celebrate and give thanks to God because God has resolved out of love for you and me that he will never leave you, that he will never forsake you, never, ever. That is a promise. Let's pray. Father, we need this promise this morning because so often we, we, we fall into going it alone and we come up against our own insecurities or inabilities, our lack of will or focus, and we get lost. Lord, we need your abiding, assisting, and anchoring presence in our life. Come this morning, Father. Take hold of us. Help us to trust what you have spoken over us you're never going to leave us, and you're never going to forsake us. And so this morning, Father, we celebrate, and we give thanks and praise to you for your resolve and your promise that makes all the difference. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, and all God's people say...